send. Uh, good evening. This is George Lee's, Professor George Lee's, talking to John Patterson uh, from his home in Kelso in Scotland and John's based in East Sussex uh, on the south coast of England. Uh, and I've, this past few days I've been looking at some issues that have intrigued me for some time. Why people associate iconic figurines. Uh, and John and I have talked about the Christian religion and its spreading with the missions into the South Pacific using little models of of the baby Jesus which were called El Nino and were given in exchange for perils and riches and you know the artifacts from the local people as Christianity began to consume the whole of the pagan nations uh, and I've become aware of some sinister little comedies actually which exemplify the concept and show that it is still alive and well okay and I, I as a kid you used to watch the telly and you did not really think deeply about the comedies that were portrayed and there was a program on in the early 60s called Hogan's Heroes uh, because I'm interested in things called gonks uh, for a variety of reasons. I've always been intrigued by the gonk which is like a little woolly stuffed doll uh, and it, it's got floppy legs and big bulgy eyes and looks a bit like uh, you know something from the Muppet Show uh, and I've never really understood what they were or why they were used as children's toys uh, but now I think I understand it but when I saw the links to Hogan's Heroes and I found you know how you go into a Google search and you find the word gonk and it's associated with the word gonk you later and then you read that it is a pretentious piece of equipment that actually serves no useful purpose a word used in place of an actual technical term for a mechanical device and then it says in this definition clink versus the gonculator Hogan's Heroes episode 1968 and I watched it and I was shocked because it is a joke at the profiteering and the double agents in war and then when you think back to your childhood you think oh shit and that's just like that French comedy program what was the French one with the ooh la la people and you know sort oh, of no no it was about wartime Paris uh, I forget what it was called but it was just a parody on the free French silk stockings for all the women and you know how joyful it was to be in war if you're one of the profiteers on either side so try and find on the internet Hogan's Heroes S4 E2 hyphen Clink versus the Gonculator. Almost all of the Germans that are in it, and this I got from Wikipedia, where the director and the producer behind the whole of the series was a chap called Bing Crosby. You know Bing Crosby, the Bob yeah, Hope yeah. movie man? Yeah. Uh, you should read it, it's fascinating because basically it is a joke at the whole of World War II's expense and the episode where they show you the gonculator shows you the construction of this it looks like a hoover with a pointy end and it's designed to you know do something I can't remember what it was going to do but effectively it is able to suck up and incarcerate one of the people that are portrayed in the movie uh, and and it's it's but if you listen to the innuendo in that episode and you see what they do and you see the iconic figures and things that they portray you'll see that it, when Greg Hallett explained Operation Winnie the Pooh all of the people that are in that are in this one episode you can see the relevance of the rabbits because they've got the rabbits in 
iconic gestures and little images and wooden figures uh, before you can submit things to the gonculator you have to put it through a rabbit shaped hole with big sticky up ears and that is the cage for the victim of the testing of the gonculator yeah and you've got the Germans are spying on the British and the British in the camp are spying on the Germans and they've got surveillance tools on both sides so that they know exactly what is going on in the officers mess and in the place where they're pretending that they're digging a tunnel as if they wanted to escape from this really relaxing and enjoyable environment and and when you see it and you tally it with what Greg Hallett said then you understand that they understand and then when you look at the figures in it and the characters you see that they come into different com comedy programs as the decades unfold so they're still laughing at the Winnie the Pooh joke and I don't know which are the Nazis and which are the Brits but when you're a profiteer it does not matter what your ethnicity is what your religion is as long as you're up the chain of p command and you're entitled to suitcases full of money or the Nazi gold in Geneva then you will laugh at the whole thing and at the global citizens expense uh, and then when I realized that you know the gonculator thing is still associated with icons and that's you know that's the leading to what a gonk is was the gonculator name spelt with a K in one version that I found spelt with a C in another uh, but then when you look at modern day practices and the inception of new companies and the comedies around it then you see that they're still using the same techniques and what I used as an illustration for this was another thing that has intrigued me the, the jo you know the man Johnny Vegas? yeah 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 He's, he's a rep for the ads for PG Tips, the T, PG yeah. Tips, yeah, yeah. you know that? Yeah. And have you seen the ads for that? What is the figurine that they use for that? What, the, 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 the monkeys? Yeah, it's, so it's monkey. Uh, and that explains oodles to me. So the monkey is like El Nino. Oh, sorry, chimpanzees. Yeah, it's it. I think yeah, I believe it's called monkey. Oh, okay. Yeah, friends of mine. I've seen I've seen friends of mine use it, and they adore it, and they think it's really good fun. And there's nothing sinister in it until you see that the directors and the actors understand intimately everything that Hallett told us about Operation Winnie the Pooh, yeah. about all of the characters in it about the role of the free French and all the defections to other countries and all of the fact you know there was a scandal earlier this year about German people being accused of spying on Yanks yes yeah it's the same thing they just keep rerunning the allegations yep. but they're still doing it which is why society is incapable of thriving because they do it for the fast buck they do it to dismember the professions and some of the names of the gonks that I know are linked in to the actual dismemberment of professions and Dickensian characters that are associated with that uh, you know things like uh, to be a bumbling official it's actually laughed at in Hogan's Heroes and the dismemberment of society's capability by the imposition of twits with clipboards instead of gifted professionals who are dedicated to their career path the clip with the twit, twit with the clipboard eventually asset strips the whole of their sector of life and it's happening in oh, health yeah, but we're not hiding anything Schultz it's uh, uh, uh so there's a little, there's a little bit, you know, you can hear how jocular it is. Nothing. Well, it's, uh, it's, um, yes, Colonel Holmes. That's a rabbit trap, right? 
so that's the little trap that's the lead in to the gonculator with the rabbit ears and you can see that the whole thing is a joke at the intel double agent networks that we've explained that were led by the Flemings and the Flemings now lead the corrupted companies uh, and then when you see the dismemberment of the NHS at the expense of buffoons when you see the local council leadership that we have and you see them profit taking at the expense of every ratepayer and every taxpayer on the globe you realize that it is a plot bold and brilliant and I now understand entirely the gonk and I now understand entirely the baby Jesus I now understand entirely the Cindy doll everything that you release as a way of making society incapable you associate it with merchandise and the Christmas story is absolutely tragic the Easter story with the eggs and the resurrection is absolutely tragic it's all about making money for the elites the CEOs and the jokers that run the campaigns to take us to war perpetually which takes us back to the Rothschilds but you can see in Hogan's Heroes how many tears there are and when you look at the NHS now and you look at the regulators in pharmacy they come from the midwife sector <laughs> yeah and you look at the other regulators in the right to work sector in pharmacy which is the you know you, now you need to do a thing called CPD you've heard of CPD before oh, just correct me if I'm wrong are there not more managers in the NHS than what there is doctors? Yes, it's pathetic. Everybody is crawling over with bureaucracy. The waiting times list is talked about almost every evening on Report in Scotland. Nobody will talk about the frauds that are on my website where, you know, the doctor salaries up to 40% of that comes from giving drugs by volume. And I know the chief pharmacist for Scotland. I've been interviewed by him a couple of times in my career. Uh, and because I don't have any impact in my research, I cannot get a job anymore. George, listen, people are more interested in watching X Factor than finding out how they're being brutalised. Well, you know, I'm, I'm a fan of the movie, of the comedy programme, The Big Bang Theory. Okay. And there's characters in that called Hofstetter who are in Hogan's Heroes S4E2 Clink versus the Gonculator so they keep popping the person into the the comedy program and they do it all the time you know at the Sid Sydney Street Siege Papa Sokolu was the name of the policeman that was killed he appears in the film Personal Services as a man who will give you a whack who will toss you off in a toilet uh, for cash and it, they think it is really really funny and that the citizens will not notice it I cannot help but notice it because I was born to get this job done and to stop the profiteering and to stop the brutalization of all countries by the profiteers at the head of society so please please try and watch Hogan's Heroes and that particular episode it's https youtube.com front slash watch question mark v equals capital E capital D n small n 80 z stroke u z p8 Hogan's Heroes s4 e2 hyphen clink versus the gonculator and watch the whole thing from start to finish and read one of those little if you go to my timeline about you know the the black forces at work and the world war two scandal that was the operation winnie the pooh scandal then you can just see how all of these characters almost all of them are jews that were taken to america during the conflict period like we've discussed for the Warner Brothers and so many others the Oppenheimers or the Operation Paperclip people 
all the people that came from Gottingen and came from Heidelberg as nuclear physicists or rocket scientists to deliver the nuclear device that was dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki uh, and we are still laughing at the same jokes the same iconic gestures the same rabbit figurines uh, and the same accents the Pythons did it in Britain you know the Hitler living in Britain post-war that was a joke Hitler lived in Britain pre-war he was trained in Britain as you know Tavistock. yeah and and the same with Stalin that was the Sydney Street siege yeah. uh, and when you learn that the iconic merchandise is tagged to massive genocidal frauds like that either in a l religious massacre an anti-semitic massacre or a warmongering campaign where the money lenders fund both sides and the profiteers get put in prison camps but if you're an officer you get to take your Batman with you and you get to make a comedy program with the two Ronnies one of which is in the Chipping Norton set with the yep. Prime Minister before God got to him yep. that's Ronnie Barker yep. the other one Ronnie Corbett is actually Ronnie Balfour Corbett and Robert Louis Stevenson is who wrote about the globalized treasure islands is Robert Louis Balfour Stevenson it is a ruthless cabal of world owners they are now media owners and they are jokers at the war dead's expense it's really vicious and the little cuddly toy that comes in at the end of the story to market something new like the 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 PG tips story everything has merchandise at the end of the trail in the World Cup soccer tournament they now take a free kick from a plastic podium you must have noticed that they've done it in rugby for decades this time you put I forget what they call it but instead of digging a hole in the ground or piling up some mud to put the ball on so you can get some spin on it you put it on a commercialized tee oh yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> everything is done and what we'll get for the carbon credits thing that we have talked about as the El Nino weather patterns fraud what we're going to get for that is the merchandise thing that we need to buy the right to breathe yeah we're exhaling carbon dioxide we're going to have to pay a tax on inhaling oxygen that God gave us for nothing but I hope that God will catch up with these bastards hey, hey, well, George, that's yeah. Yeah. so please please watch that episode and when because you're an, a follower of Harlot and you understand all of the characters in Operation Winnie the Pooh from Tigger who was I believe Winston Churchill to the to the king who made the foolish speech who I believe was Christopher Robin is that correct can you remember the characters names yeah but I can't uh, not and the rabbits that go into the gonculator <laughs> are actually Hitler's friends and commandants yeah and what you see with the gonculator is what you get in the war of the world's warmongering gesture and in the Tesla things about the harp menace what you get is just a little sci-fi narrative and at the end of it one of the characters in this episode is just an empty charred suit on the ground because the gonculator's done for him so it's something that is a gimmick that never does anything but they sell it they market it and they impose their will on the people to make it look like a series of comedic gestures and all of that was written by Bing Crosby and I don't know what the story is with Bing Crosby and the Freemasons I'm not really interested in it but when you watch that single episode it explained to me the gonks well, that I've I'm seen gonna it watch, I'm going to watch that now George I'm, I'm going to put the link because you know we're both doing a recording of this and I'm going to put the link in the, uh, in the box underneath so when you see it we could maybe make another video and discuss yeah. other examples yeah, yeah. of how that you know that 
when I was a boy, every boy in my hometown had a little action man dolly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, with a helmet on it. It was effectively a war toy. And I, I remember we used to go on Sunday school trips to the coast in a train. You remember when Britain had trains? Oh, listen, On all the routes. We used to go up to Glasgow on the Pullman to visit my granny, you know, in, in, uh, who lived up there. And we used to go on the overnight sleeper. Fantastic day. Yeah, well, the tragedy is that the people that are asset stripping their professions are laughing at the beaching joke. So the well the dismemberment of Britain's yeah. train network is a tragedy for the yeah. whole of Britain's citizens citizenship, yeah. and now that they've dismembered our capability and our leadership teams to make them buffoons with clipboards and tick boxes, we have no way of getting those back without the massive infrastructure scams that you read about every day. So it's another way of profiteering in peacetime, and it is ever so clever. But they will regret openly laughing at that when the world catches up with them. Oh, <laughs> make no mistake about it. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know what we've reported about Quentin Bryce and the you know the hopeless joke at the War Dead's expense that is Mr. Bean at the London Olympics. She, the, Quentin Bryce had to resign within six weeks of those revelations and they're in a very dangerous place now and they know it because they they're laying off the military they're not getting decent pensions Bowden's told you how he doesn't get his till he's 74 disgusting yeah, he it is, served his country for 12 years it is ruthless and the people that have the non-executive directorships selling PG tips and selling the little icons through Marks and Spencers yeah, because that's where we get the Christmas gear from now. The nativity calendar comes from Miss Manning and Buller, who's now the boss at Imperial College London, a leader of men in the university sector, men and women in the university sector, following on from my old boss at Wellcome Foundation, the drugs uh, company. Can I just remind people, George, that Marks and Spencers, which was right next door to Edgware Road um, tube station, was where they took the survivors from the 7-7... Seven, seven, uh, bomb attack Marks and Spencers yeah of all places and St Mary's Hospital I'm not so confident about those things anymore John because of my connections to Peter Eyre Peter Eyre is a slimy shit as far as I'm concerned he will come crawling back at some stage but he knows that a lot of the things that he has reported are false flag things and that's why you know all of them have deserted our cause no longer will they make videos with me I never made videos with Peter Eyre, but he introduced me to Jacqueline Chan. Jacqueline Chan is now having people pay to sign her petitions, and she's on the board of six healthcare entrepreneurial companies, which is why Gordon Bowden, who was in league with her, left my company. Gordon is doing good research. He's doing it on relatively trivial things because he has an affinity for the Rothschilds and the monarchies. He no. will not let you talk about conspiracy theories like warmongering for profit, even although you and I know intimately that that is the only reason for it. There is no division between people like Cassius Clay and the Vietnamese. It's engineered entirely by world leaders to profit, and leaders of corporations and leaders of sectors of life, yeah, including the NHS including the judiciary. It is so corrupted now that nobody can make a decent living. That British students and European students are robbed blind. Their prospects of getting a job in the environment that the man with the clipboard runs is next to nothing. And I'm going to out it. Or I'm going to die first. No, you won't, George. Uh, you these bastards first, you trust me. Well, I don't know whether they're all bastards, because we get led this way now. Yeah, when you see the changes in the rules of rugby, so that everybody has to be on the touchline for most of a Saturday afternoon, and you see how much the rugby players at the top of the game get paid to be having a laugh at the other's expense. We talked about Saracen's Rugby Club in a video that we made yesterday, and it's globalised theft now. We talked about Michael Liner, 
and his replacement possibly by a body double. The body double thing in wartime is vital and because okay. you listen to Harlot's stories about that and yeah. you know all about Putin and the demonization of Putin and how many body doubles Putin had when he was working in New Zealand yeah. in league with Helen Clark who then became the Prime Minister and who is a massive profiteer at the UN Development Agency. She's been booted out of there already because she was under scrutiny by people like me and Greg. She is a thief. I thought she was a very respectable woman until I read Greg Hallett's work. But then you realise that she's best friends with Shania Twain, who's now in Las Vegas. And, you know, I was a great admirer of Shania Twain, uh, and her music is great. And But when you see the jokes that she makes together with Helen Clark on the little video clips that you see, and when you see the incursion of multi-millionaires in uh, innocent little New Zealand and the Wealth Divide project beginning to happen there with the Prime Minister John Key who's a major banking executive worth 50 million when he comes in uh, like Alex Salmond is like all of the world leaders are David Laws was an executive at JP Morgan and at one of the other banks I think it was Barclays he was the negotiator of the coalition agreement in 2010 and then he got kicked out of the cabinet because he did the scandalous thing of claiming expenses for his boyfriend's flat. And now he's the boss in the education ministry again. Uh, it's just vicious. And all that needs to happen is that the citizens who are being driven into those massive gas price and electricity price rises on a, on a year by year basis now where their salary has been locked at the same level for five years back to back. They do mass protests, but all they need to do is to turn to the quizlings that head their profession and drive it into rack and ruin. And I've explained to you why the CPD thing is done. The CPD thing is done to prevent things like shipment. Shipment is a false flag to cover up the identity of Shipman, the war correspondent for Iraq, who tried to save David Kelly's life and reputation. And then they bring people into the comedy sector in Gavin and Stacey called Shipman, and all of a sudden, pharmacists, dentists, nurses, doctors, they have to work their socks off so they have no time to look at the crimes of the Prime Minister and the Cabinet or the heads of their professions in asset stripping and stealing from the students in those healthcare professions. Yeah, it is ruthless. All that the world needs to do is to watch Hogan's heroes, understand the gonculator, understand the fear mongering and the threat that is the invasion from Mars. That's the reason that H.G. Wells was put on the War Office he could scare the people shitless with just a radio program and <laughs> they think that that is hilarious and it is really really clever when you look at how long it has lasted Piso the religious fraudster knew that someday his story would be uncovered and we've uncovered it in a number of videos already uh, and, and I just want you to gradually bring the, because the able danger thing looks a bit like this to me. You've got people sitting in a jocular environment and they're talking about things, they're talking about religion, they're talking about New Testament citations, and they're talking about transatlantic things, and, but largely, if it's a culprit in their nation, they sort of sidestep it, but they're quite happy to hit on Cressida Dick. Uh, and 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 when you see the investigative journalists closing down their efforts amongst themselves to let President Obama speak on Ukraine, when they know that President Obama is already a fraud <laughs> and his wife is a profiteer worth several million dollars for the holiday expenses that she's incurred alone, then then you begin to see the parodies that is the Hogan's Heroes ep episode that I'm referring you to. Because it's like, it's like watching the BBC News. It's like listening to Jim Nocte for half an hour. The whole thing 
is a sham the whole thing is a lie and the whole thing is a joke at the innocent people who get conscripted in wartime and then become the basis for the poppy fund profiteering and the war graves tourism industry it is tragic but for these guys it's just a sick joke so can you look at that and share it amongst your friends with a little bit of narrative definitely George I'm going to watch it now I've been, I've been wanting to watch it all day but I've got back late and, uh... thanks for your interest in it John it's really important because yes. you know everything is being asset stripped again and Gordon has told us about that and when you see the, the rate at which grade is doing it it's, it's several thousand fold greater than Gordon was describing Oh, and if yeah, that yeah. Michael Moore thing that we just made where he's got 80 companies is compared to what the revelations that Gordon made where he's got one and he's already resigned from it you can see that the teams of people that are reluctant to work with me because I'm in a hurry I want to stop this in my lifetime not in a thousand years we'll time stop it, George. we're going to stop it yeah mate. good lad John thanks for your support no problem anytime George you okay know. Bye-bye. Night-night. You take care, mate.